Hi everyone, it's Trisha here. I hope you find me here okay. Um, I had some trouble going live um, the Facebook scheduled way, unfortunately. Facebook not being very helpful tonight. So I hope you find me here. Um, I'm just going to share this link quickly with the original um, um, scheduled post so that people can still find me. So if you just bear with me for a second, feel free to um, put any questions in the comments. If you have any animal communication questions for me, um, anything you want to know about how animal communication works, how I work. Um, let me just do this quickly while you're thinking about that. Find me here. And hopefully, um, anyone who's been um, looking for this tonight will be able to find me. So, oh, I've got a couple of you. Excellent. Hi to Mandy and Gloria and Sharon. Yay. And I can even see your comments, which is nothing short of a miracle for Facebook um, lives. <laughs> it's a minefield, believe me. So um, I'm here for as long as you want me. If you have any questions at all about animal communication, um, the sorts of information I get, um, anything you're not clear about or doesn't make sense to you, any questions at all, let's have them. And those of you that are here live, um, we've got a few more popping in. Robin, hi, Veronica and Miranda, hi. Thank you so much for joining me. Excuse me, I've also got a cat roaming about in the background who, oh, she's over here chewing on something, who will probably disrupt proceedings at some point. Um, yeah, so um, any questions at all about animal communication, put them in the comments and I'll do my very best to enlighten you. Uh, oh yes, and I was saying, those of you that are here live, I have my unicorn cards handy. And I also have my big pendulum handy. So you can ask a yes, no question with the pendulum or you can get a unicorn card if you would like. Uh, but mostly I'd really like to answer any animal communication queries, you know, about how it works and all of that. Um, Rachel has a question. Oh, good. Um, Rachel says, can you communicate with foals before they're born? That's a really good question, actually. Um, yes and no. And different animal communications uh, communicators get different information and have different abilities. So that's something to bear in mind up front. But for me personally, um, oh, what's she doing? I'm sorry about the cat. Uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> she's chewing on something. Um, for me personally, I've done quite a few uh, communications with mares that are in foal. And I've had a, a good success rate of predicting what sex the foal was going to be. I think I've always been correct when I've done those. Um, so I can do that sort of thing and I can um, kind of tune in with their energy and I've done, uh, quite often I'll do energy balancing of a mare in foal and healing to hopefully ensure that everything goes smoothly. As far as communicating, communicating with the foal, not so much because the way I see it is that because they haven't been born yet, they don't actually have a lot to say yet. Um, and kind of leading on from that, I personally also find if I'm communicating with young horses or young animals, you know, so foals, puppies, kittens, um, 
foals or young horses up to about at least a couple of years, three years old, something like that. To me, they have a very naive kind of energy and feel about them. So, um, you know, it's like they don't know much yet. They haven't experienced much yet and they don't really remember what's happened to them previously. Uh, you know, in previous lifetimes, although I can access that separately. Uh, but yeah, they have a very sort of young, naive feeling. She's going to knock everything down back then. Um, and, um, and so there's a limit to, um, it's not like you speak, for me anyway, it's not like you're speaking to an old soul who, who is giving you heaps and heaps of information. I'm going to have to rescue the cat. Uh, but I'll keep talking so you know I'm still here and um, keep putting your questions in the in the comments. Look, I'll show you the cat. She can say cheerio before I throw her out. Look, speak to the camera. Oh, 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 I'm going the wrong way. There you go. Right, she's getting thrown out before she causes more trouble. Out you go. Okay, so I hope that answered your question, Rachel. Uh, let me know if anyone else has questions. Let's see what we've got. Um, Gloria says beautiful cards. They are, yes. Um, Gloria says, I would love to know, is my mare music in physical pain? And Mandy says, can we ask for our pet's health? Um, I'm really kind of intending this to be more about general animal communication questions, you know, how it works and all of that. Um, I can ask a yes, no question for you with my pendulum, though, if you would like. Um, so I'll circle back around to those ones um, if we run out of other questions. So hopefully Facebook doesn't lose the comments for me. Um, I can still see them there at the moment. Miranda's asking, can you still communicate with animals that have passed away? Yes, and I do that quite often too. I find that really interesting because um, I wrote a blog about this too, and I'll, I'll paste in the link to that afterwards. Um, in my experience, once animals pass over, they may or may not move on straight away. So however you want to think of that, going to the light, crossing the rainbow bridge, whatever works for you. Um, if they don't go straight away, they sometimes need a bit of extra help. And what I find when I communicate with animals that have um, passed over, uh, the type of information that I might get from them depends where they're at in that process. So if they haven't gone all the way over yet, I can get information about, you know, um, what happened to them, for instance, what their death was like, you know, if it was an accident or, you know, the circumstances, that sort of thing. But once they've passed over into the light or over the rainbow bridge, for me personally, I don't get as much of that information. I still can by questioning, but it's not volunteered as much. And the way I understand it or, or what makes sense to me is that once they've actually moved on, it doesn't matter to them anymore. They're not in pain anymore. They don't harbor any ill will towards their owner or the person driving the car that knocked them down or you know whatever it was um they're in a happy place with no pain and they're fine it's us that hang on to all the worries and anxiety and oh does he hate me for blah 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 you know um so um that's something to bear in mind um, if you have an animal that has passed over, um, try not to, I know it's easier said than done, but try not to 
get into that feeling of anxiety or blaming yourself, did I do the right thing, all that sort of stuff, because mostly they are quite literally over it. I hope, I hope that's reassuring in a way. Um, let me know if that answers your question, Miranda. Uh, Tolina wants to know what Tallulah's current block is. That's a much bigger question. That's not just a yes, no question. So not something I can answer tonight, Tolina, but I could identify that probably in a session um, if you wanted to book one. Um, and Rachel also wants to know if Shiloh is in pain. He's not giving me an option to add a photo, but he's in, I, I know Shiloh, that's okay. Um, uh, trying to work out if he's being a twit in the arena because he's sore or because he's taking advantage of me as I'm not 100%. Hi to Sheila um, and Mandy. Um, Miranda says we lost four cats at the same time due to a malicious poisoning. Oh, that's awful. They've left a big void in our family and we'd love to know if they're okay and if they're still together. Now, um, so I would say yes, they're more than likely okay. Um, as to whether they're still together or not, that's kind of an interesting question too, because that kind of brings in the whole question of what is time and um, how does reincarnation work and does heaven exist? <laughs> Tiny little questions really, <laughs> Miranda. <laughs> um, there's a yes and a no answer. Um, yes, in some respect, their energy will all still be together in some respect on some timeline because they were together in this lifetime. Somewhere their energy will still be together. I personally don't see that or believe that in the way of, um, oh, they're all together in heaven now. That's not how my brain works. I'm too, I'm a bit more, um, kind of analytical and non-religious. <laughs> um, but from an energetic point of view, and those of you that know me, I'm all about the energy, right? From an energetic point of view, yes, their energy will be together somewhere on some timeline or, other, or another. <laughs> Does that make sense? Are you following me? So, you know, um, I think for owners like you, where something traumatic like that has happened, by all means, take comfort in the belief um, that they're fine and they're all together now, because they, they will be somewhere. But I don't believe it's that traditional kind of heaven kind of way. Hope that makes sense. Um, so absolutely, yes, you can reach out to me for animals that have um, passed over if you want to know more or know where they're at in the process or that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Charlene says my J horse Jed passed on. What was wrong with him when he was sick? Again, that's a bigger question than I can answer tonight, um, Charlene, because to answer anything other than a yes, no question, I need to go into a meditative state and, um, you know, do it in a, an actual session. But I can answer yes, no questions tonight if um, if you have any ideas of, you know, how to narrow it down. Uh, Rachel says, worth getting a session. I got one when Fern passed and it helped me heaps. Yeah, it can really, it can reassure you a lot about um, how they're, how they're doing and how not to be beating yourself up about stuff. Oh, that's nice that you had them all cremated together, Miranda. Um, uh, she wants to know if Evie's in pain. Mandy says, my dog Soul has a lump found in her throat and tests are unsure yet. It's either fungal or cancel. Can the pendulum help here? Uh, possibly, yes. Um, so I'm gonna scroll back up to the top. Um, if anyone has any of those more general questions about <coughs> 
how animal communication works or the sorts of information that I can get, put them in the comments. Those questions are getting priority. And um, if there aren't any of those questions, I'm going to circle back and answer some yes, no questions with my pendulum. So let me see from the beginning who had a yes, no. Do, do, do. Uh, so Gloria wanted to know whether her mare music is in physical pain. So <clears throat> I'm using my big pendulum and my really fancy professional yes, no chart. <laughs> <clears throat> so I've got my pendulum <clears throat> over the chart um, and I'm going to be looking at your name and your horse's name while I ask the question. Um, so I'm, I'm doing it down here. Uh, so, Gloria Faye and her mare music. So, is music in physical pain? I get a yes to that, Gloria. Does that help you or not? <laughs> Doesn't narrow it down much, but it might it might uh, give you confirmation of a suspicion. Um, let's find another yes, no. Oh, so Rachel. Is Shiloh in pain? Okay, and I know Shiloh, so I can connect with him. Um, is Shiloh in pain? I get a yes. Um, what I'm going to do, I've got uh, another chart here that's uh, zero to 100. So it's a percentage chart effectively. And I'll come back and do this for you as well, Gloria. Um, so for Rachel, I'm going to ask to what extent Shiloh is in pain because it'd be good to know if it's 5% or 90%. So to what extent is Shiloh in pain? Uh, it's pretty low, actually. It is only about 5%. So um, I'm going to ask, this is partly because I know Shiloh. I've done sessions with him before. To what extent is Shiloh taking advantage of Rachel right now? Hmm. Hmm. Yes, it's more about that. So there's a little bit of pain, Rachel, but I'm getting 100% <laughs> to him taking advantage. So that's something you might need to <laughs> address or have a chat to him about. Uh, let me go back to Gloria. I'm going to check for music. To what extent music is in physical pain. I'm just looking at your name while I'm, so I'm not looking at the pendulum while I'm doing it I'm looking at your name so that I'm making an energetic connection and it's at it's quite high actually Gloria it's about 75 percent for her being in pain so that's pretty high um right let me just scroll down see if there's any more general questions um Gloria says, awesome responses. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Miranda, I'm also currently nursing a very sick horse, George, and we're thinking he has salmonella poisoning. The vets have been out of, uh, for invasive therapy. He Is he feeling better in himself at all? He has to be worried. OK, I'll come back to that. And Mandy says, can dogs reincarnate and come back to you through another dog. Oh, yes. Um, I would say basically, yes, anything is possible. And I think especially with animals that have shorter lifespans than us, it's entirely possible that you might uh, meet that same animal again in another of its lifetimes um, in another body, if you like. Uh, so yeah, I think that's entirely possible. Um, probably with horses too, but of course they have longer lifetimes. And so, you know, the, the chances of you meeting that same horse again might be smaller. It's just going on probabilities, you know? Um, okay, so the next ones are personal ones. So let me go back and see where I got to with the personal questions. Oh, 
ያክሉ መሰኔ so i couldn't answer charlene's uh tolina says she'll reach out for a session good um okay sheila yorns would like to know if evie is in pain okay so i'll ask the yes no first so is evie in pain get a yes sheila i'll do the percentage one as well so to what extent is sheila's evie in pain no actually relatively low 10 percent so a little bit of pain um mandy's dog with a lump in its throat um either fungal or cancer right so let's ask mandy's dog so um is the lump fungal I'm going to test them both and then tell you what the answer is. Uh, is the lump cancer? Okay, so I got a yes to fungal and a no to cancer, which is probably encouraging. Um, uh, to what extent is it fixable? I get. 100% fungal and 100% fixable. So I hope that um, helps, does the trick. Okay, Maria Periton, would my mare Lisa like to be retired and become a mum again this season? Ooh. Let's see. So Maria, you're new Maria, haven't seen your name around before, I don't think. So thanks for joining me. Um, would Maria's mayor Lisa like to be retired? No. Would she like to be a mum again? Yes, because there's a difference between being retired and being a mum. So no to being retired and yes to being a mum. Um, okay, George. George the horse with possible salmonella is he feeling any better let's ask if it is salmonella does george have salmonella get a yes to salmonella to what extent does he have salmonella yeah i get 100 percent to salmonella miranda um is he feeling be any better no that's pretty low um so here's my chat about this um for those of you that are on my mailing list i wrote about this in this week's newsletter my newsletters go out on a tuesday um those of you that know me know that i talk a lot about energy and all my animal communication sessions include energetic clearing and rebalancing and healing um, and that includes things like uh, clearing past life issues and trauma um, and um, associations with previous experiences, all of that kind of thing. That's all in an animal communication session. Uh, so when we, uh, our energetic balance is really important. And if our energetic balance is off, then our our or our horses or animals our um happiness will be off our behavior will be off um our health will be off and it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation because if you get sick your energetic balance will probably be off and if your energetic balance is off for some other reason it's more likely that you'll be unhappy or unhealthy or um, behaving badly. You know, think of the things horses do. So with George and his salmonella, and it sounds like it's been pretty serious. Um, it's one thing knowing that they're sick and uh, 
you know, uh, dealing with it from a veterinary point of view and giving them whatever medications they need and all of that, that's not necessarily going to address the fact that their energetic balance will be out too. And in my experience, uh, in order for them to heal as well as they can and feel happier and stronger and to kind of be able to combat whatever is going on, you need to get their energetic health in balance. So um, some of you can do that yourself. If you do Reiki or any kind of energetic work yourself, you can probably do that for your animals. Um, you could do or, or try at least the Masterson method bladder, um, bladder meridian um, technique is re a really nice one for balancing energy. You could try that or by all means book a session with me, tell me what's going on and I can help get them back um, in balance and boosting their health a bit. Uh, so, let me know if that helps. Okay, um, Robin Roberts. Hello, there's another new name that I haven't seen, I don't think. Is the treatment I'm getting for my horse Shania helping? Let's see. So, is the treatment for Shania, Robin Roberts, is the treatment helping? Yes, Robin, it is. Will the food Billy is on increase her weight? Oh, that's an interesting question. Will Billy's current diet increase her weight? I get a no to that, Angela. Hopefully you know what that means. Um, Tamsin says, are you able to tell what's causing a head flick in a horse? Um, some with some things, and that would be a good example, I might not necessarily be able to say it's definitively this, but usually what I can do is rule things out. So I can look at all the possible causes so, you know, is it neurological? Is it an allergy? Is it, um, is it um, irritation in the nasal passages? You know, I can look at all the, the things it might be and test them all and rule things out or see what combination of things is causing it. So, um, because it, it varies from animal to, from horse to horse. So, the answer to that one is maybe, but just possibly not quite the way you think I might. Um, let me, I'm just going to scroll down and see if there are any other general questions and then I'll come back to these. Um, Mandy says, hence why I called her soul as I believed so. And yes, I wonder about my current horse and my first pony. All right, cool. Um, thank you, thank yous. Uh, Miranda said that's exactly what I'm getting from George so you've confirmed my communication with him good I'm glad that helped um, okay so no more general ones let me go back and see what I got to then Shania Billy Hedflix um diane johnson i'd like to know if my mare bella is in pain when ridden <clears throat> so if anyone's just joining us now i'm using my big pendulum and my fancy yes no chart down here um so is bella in pain when ridden yeah i got an immediate yes to that diane um is it tack related not tack related um is it rider i get no to tack and yes to rider let me know if that helps uh let's see who's next kisses from mandy thank you from maria you're welcome jill Wright. hi jill is indy b ready to leave this mortal coil oh indy okay 
Is Emily B ready? Oh, I get a yes, Jill. Um, I'll ask on my percentage chart. Um, I know Jill and I think I've connected with Indy before, haven't I? So uh, let's see how much. Uh, pr pretty much 100%. It's pretty high, Jill. Were you getting that feeling? That's hard, but I, I say that the, um, I was speaking before about talking to animals that have horses or animals that have passed over. There's the other time um, that it's useful to book an animal communication session is uh, before they pass over. So if you've got a horse or pet who's getting older or seems to be in more pain or um, just doesn't seem to be enjoying life as much anymore, with an animal communication session, I can ask them what they feel about it, what their wishes are. Are they just hanging on because they don't want you to get upset and really they'd rather be gone? Or are they very stoic and determined to see it out? Or are they completely over it and they just want it over and done with? Um, I can explain to them what's going to happen. You know, with horses, we have we tend to have to plan it a bit. You know, I've got the vet coming next week and, and they're going to do this and then this is going to happen and blah, blah. I can explain that to them and prepare them for it um, and just make sure they're OK with the whole thing. In the sessions where I've done that for people, they usually report back that the whole process went really smoothly and um, I also find when I check back in with those animals afterwards, remember before I was saying about they might pass straight on or they might kind of linger or be a bit stuck for a while, those ones that have had that preparation in advance, they pass over really smoothly and easily. So that's something to bear in mind if you've got an older animal. Um, Rebecca says, my lovely gelding has a slightly embarrassing habit. <laughs> the mind boggles. Answers on a postcard, please. <laughs> Is it caused by a pathology or habit? Hmm, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Come on, I want everyone's guesses, please. What's his embarrassing habit? Poor boy. Okay, so it's Rebecca Oaks and her lovely gelding with the embarrassing habit. Um, his embarrassing habit is caused by a pathology. His embarrassing habit is a habit. I get yes to habit and no to pathology, Rebecca. <laughs> ah, dear. Okay, Megan Chambers, will Birdie learn to back off the float or is she scared? Okay, will she learn to back off the float? So I get a yes to that. But here's the thing about using a pendulum. I don't know how many of you out there um, with me just now uh, use a pendulum at all. Um, if it's the sort of thing that you're into or curious about, potentially interested in, um, I'll put the link somewhere in for uh, my Facebook group, which is called Trisha Wren Spiritual Stuff. You might like to join us in there because we talk about all the woo things and um, there's quite a few pendulum people in there. And I also have a pendulum workshop. Uh, it's a, a, a live a recording of a live workshop that I did a year or so ago and you can you can buy that one hour recording and learn how I use this. Um, but here's the thing about a question like that. When you say this is not me criticizing you or anything, Megan, I'm just explaining how pendulums work and how specific your question needs to be. Um, and why I do yes, no questions and why I measure things on the zero to 100 percent scale or, or different um, scales. A question like, will she learn to back off the float? And I get a yes. 
Well, so it tells you, yes, she will, but it doesn't give you any idea. You know, maybe it'll take her 10 years <laughs> because we haven't been very specific with the question. We could say, will she learn to back off the float this year or, you know, within this amount of time or that sort of thing. So um, uh, that's just something to kind of bear in mind, not just when you're asking questions, but also when you're getting answers, bear in mind that the answer might not actually be very useful. Um, so yes, she will learn to back off the float. Um, is she scared for the scared one? And so just for anyone new joining, I'll just explain again, when I'm doing an animal communication session, um, you know, that you've booked and paid for basically, I sit in my meditation chair and I close my eyes and I tune in energetically with the animal and I get the, I ask a lot of questions and I get the information from the horse or from the animal. In a situation like this, where we're doing it um, off the cuff like this tonight, um, I can't do that. It would take too long and there's a lot of you asking questions. So I can't give you those in depth answers. We don't have time for that. You need to book a full session for that. But what I can do is give you quick yes, no answers, which is what I'm doing with the pendulum. So I'm going to ask Birdie to what extent she is scared about backing off the float. Oh, it's actually quite low, Megan. Zero. So she's not particularly scared. It, it, I, I would assume it's more of a training issue, but she will get it. Okay. Mandy says, does my horse tomorrow think about me much? Mm, that's interesting. Is that a horse that you had in the past at some point and sold or something, uh, Mandy? Um, does tomorrow think about Mandy? I get a yes though, that's nice. Robin says, thank you, you're welcome. Diane says, thank you. Suspect she has arthritis in her back. Ah, okay. Sheila says, thank you. Uh, and is it feet or elsewhere? Um, 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 um. I can't do follow-ups because I can't remember the name of the, oh, it was, was it Evie? I can't remember. Um, I need to scroll back too far when it's, when you give me a follow-up question. So I need to just keep scrolling forward for the people that have got new questions. Sorry. Uh, Jill says, I thought we were going to lose him a couple of months back. I'm planning on putting him down before it gets too hot. I'll book a session with you shortly. Oh, bless. <clears throat> Mandy says, do animals communicate telepathically with each other? That's a good question. Uh, I would say yes. And if you think about it, think about any animals, but we're mainly talking about horses, right? Um, they, can't, they don't talk, do they? And even although they do vocalise, it's not what we would call verbalizing. So, you know, they might have different kinds of whinnies or whatever, but they don't have the range of vocabulary that we have, for instance. So they don't talk. <clears throat> so how do they communicate? Well, it has to be telepathically, doesn't it? And um, so the way that they do that and you can use this too with your animals is that they um the way i would describe it is that they communicate in pictures so they would um picture the thing you know if they want um another horse to do something or whatever they probably picture it in their mind if it's that horse moving away or whatever it is they picture it and because they've got that visual in their mind that's what gets transmitted to the recipient and they receive pictures from each other 
Um, so, you know, that's how telepathy works. It's, uh, and for you guys, if you want your horse to, say you're um, going out to the paddock to catch your horse, while you're on your way out there, you could have a really clear picture in your mind of your horse walking towards you and meeting you at the gate, for instance. And if you practice that enough and have that really clear picture in your mind, they will get that image. And um, now I suppose you could say it's uh, not a foregone conclusion that they'll act on it, but they will start to get those images from you and hopefully act on them as well. Uh, so it's a good way of um, showing them what it is that you want for them from them or preparing them for whatever you're going to do with them. Um, Michelle Rogers says my horse has just had founder a founder episode wanting to know if he is better. I'll do a percentage one for you Michelle. To what extent has he recovered from his founder episode? Well, it's fairly high. It's about 75%, Michelle. That should be reassuring, hopefully. Um, Michelle Rogers saying we'll be booking a session for more details. Yay! Uh, totally understand your answer thanks very much for that i'll book a session for her great excellent uh angela pierce will rusty be able to float on his own soon let's see will rust now this is an interesting one because i don't think i've connected with rusty before um, um but for, and I haven't got a photo in front of me, but for some reason for this particular one, I'm getting a really strong feeling before I even start using the pendulum. I can, uh, yeah, I've got a, um, almost like butterflies, like a, an anxiety um, right inside of me feels really crap, actually. I don't like it. So <laughs> thank you, Rusty. <laughs> um, so my, before I check with the pendulum, I'm feeling like he's not uh, thrilled about the idea or the float, uh, but I'm going to ask with the pendulum now. Um, will he be able to float on his own soon? And I get a no. I'm going to say on my percentage one, I'm going to ask um, to what extent is Rusty comfortable full stop traveling in the float? No, see, it's low. It's only about 10%. So that's before you even think about him going on his own. So I would say there's still work to be done, um, Angela. Um, and again, um, so here's another uh, thing that can help with animal communication sessions. Now, this isn't uh, a guarantee. It's not foolproof. But uh, we tend to think of animal communication sessions as, be, as being um, you asking the horse all, or animal all the questions, right? Uh, you getting all the information you want to know about. But it can also be the opposite. It's all animal communication sessions are also a really useful opportunity to explain things to the animals. So I said that a bit before when we were talking about, um, you know, maybe animals that are close to the end of life, asking their opinions and maybe explaining what's going to happen to them. But same thing with something like floating or um, what else? I, I do this quite often for um, cats that aren't using the litter tray, um, um, animals with anxiety, all those kinds of things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, tuning in in an animal communication session can be a useful way to explain things to them. So like taking Rusty as an example, explaining to him 
how the float works, what it is you want from him, why you want him to do it, what's going to what's going to happen once you do get him in the float, you know, where you're going to take him and why and is it going to be nice or not nice, you know, explaining the whole thing to them so that they hopefully go, oh, oh, I had no idea. Thanks, you know. Um, sometimes they literally just don't understand why we want what we want, why we're asking what we're asking. So either, obviously, you can book an animal communication session and, and someone like me can explain things to them, what it is you want and why and all of that. But you can do it to an extent as well. So <clears throat> just using you as an example again there, Angela and Rusty, um, I would suggest next time you're practicing with him, verbally explain things to him as you're doing it. Chunk things down and just tell him each step of the way. So, um, okay, Rusty, let's walk up to the float now. And all I want you to do is put your front feet on the ramp. That's all we're doing. It's really easy. And if you can do that, I'd be so proud of you. And we're just practicing little bits so that, um, you know, it's just, uh, I want to see if you can do this and if you're listening and can you put your front feet on and stand and wait for me to ask you to take them back off, you know, whatever, just um, verbally tell them, okay, now we're going to do this and here's why we're doing it and blah, 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 and see if that helps. Because again, remember we were talking about telepathy. When we as humans, verbally explain something we're without even knowing it most of the time we are creating a picture of that thing in our mind and transmitting it to the animal so they're they might understand some of our words but mostly they're picking up on the picture that our words transmit to them so obviously i mean i always say to people don't just have verbal diarrhea with your animals but by all means, verbally explain things to them. You might find that it helps you be clear about what you're doing as well. Okay, Chris Shaw, is my horse Honey okay? Worried about her health. Okay, let's see. Honey, oh, I get a bit of a hmm, no, kind of queasy feeling again uh, on this one. Um, so is honey's health okay and i get a no i'm gonna do a percentage for you chris um how healthy is honey right now so i only get about 20 25 percent to her being healthy uh so i would say there's something going on chris um, Mandy says, if they're apart from each other, I'm not sure what that's referring to. Um, Sheila said, yes, it was Evie I was asking about. Is the pain in her feet or elsewhere? Let's see. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> it's hard if I have to scroll back and forward all the time. So, um, Evie has pain in her feet. Evie has pain in her body. I get yes to body and no to feet, Sheila. Uh, Karen Hodgson says, totally agree. I'm not sure what you agree with, but good. <laughs> Angela says, thanks, Tricia. I do tell him he's going out and coming home to the herd later. Yeah, that's a good one too. Uh, telling them how long they're going to be away for and when they're coming back, that sort of thing. Good. But yeah, maybe just chunking it down a bit more for him. Uh, yeah, telepathically, Mandy. Um, so uh, I can only see one more question, but if anyone has any more, put them in there. And especially the, the general questions about how things work. Um, Karen Hodgson says, will my daughter's horse work out for her long term? Let's see. Uh, 
Do I get a yes, Karen? And Chris says, thanks, honey is quite aged and has had a few issues. Ah, right, okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? So yeah, there's something going on. And that's me up to date with the questions, I think. So where are we at time? Oh gosh, it's been nearly an hour. Um, any more questions? I hope that's been helpful. Um, we covered a few different topics in there. So hopefully it's given you some, um, some insight to how animals work, how animal communication works, the sorts of information that I get and how I might be able to help you. Um, oh, got a couple more questions. <coughs> uh, Michelle Rogers says, is Ziggy happy? other than the founder. I'll do a percentage for you, Michelle. Uh, oh, getting a queasy feeling again. Um, to what extent is Ziggy happy? Yep, that explains the queasy feeling <laughs> because it's low. Um, like 5%, Michelle. Uh, so that kind of relates to uh, the horse I was talking about earlier. I can't remember which one it was now, and um, where I was talking about oh, it wasn't it wasn't the same one, was it? I can't remember. Um, when I was talking earlier about energetic balance and how that can help with health and um, happiness and all of that. I would say probably Ziggy could would benefit from a rebalance um, when they've had any kind of big physical issue, whether it's an accident, an injury, um, um, you know, illness of, or infection or whatever. Um, then I would highly recommend booking an energy balance and healing session. Even if you know you think you've done all you can medically, you need to get that energy back on track too, so that they can heal to their best ability. So he's still got something going on, I would say. Um, June, hi June, long time no speak. Uh, how are you and your lovelies? Lovely Lucy. Uh, shall I change instructors? Okay, so should Jane, uh, June, Sorry, June. Should June change instructor instructors? I get a yes to that, June. Um, and he says, so telepathically and hypothetically, can my dog use <laughs> I'm lost already. Telepathically and hypothetically, can my dog use telepathy to talk to my horse who's elsewhere? Uh probably. Why not? It's entirely within the realms of possibility. The, the thing about some of these things is, how do you prove it? You know, we, we don't, how do we know for sure? Well, I mean, I can ask that sort of thing in an animal communication session. Uh, are you guys talking to each other? Um, but yeah, it's absolutely, I think everything's possible. Uh, Jill says, thanks for being so generous with your gift and time. You're very welcome. You know, I love it, Jill. <laughs> Um, Angela says, is Nui enjoying being retired but going out occasionally? Is Nui enjoying being retired? Yes, Angela, yep. Kerry Jensen, hi. What's wrong with Bo? Will I be able to ride him again or will it be retirement for him? So I can ask the what's wrong with him question tonight because it's too big a question. I can do that in an animal communication session, but I can I can do a quick yes, no for you tonight. So um, I'll ask, will Kerry be able to ride Bo again? I get a no to that. Um, is Bo heading? Um, would it be beneficial for Bo to be retired? yes to that so hope that helps hi Vanita 
I may misjudge Bird's intellect, but I can do the same. I know smart in own way, but only yeah, yeah, yeah. all the same things apply, whether it's horses, dogs and cats, birds, you can do the same things. So you can visualize things, you can um, verbally um, explain things to them, all the same. Yep. <clears throat> Rose O'Donovan, would Lucy like to stay retired or like to be ridden again? Hmm. I got a wee queasy hit again there. Would Lucy like to stay retired? Would she like to be ridden again? Okay, so I was asking both before, <laughs> before I tell you what my pendulum says. So I got yes to, uh, and again, this confirms why I felt queasy. I got yes to staying retired and no to being ridden again, Rose. <clears throat> Thank you from June, hope you're well. Yes, I'm good. I hope you guys are, are all good. I think us, um, I hope you're all safe and well wherever you are. I know Victoria is not having the best time of it, um, but I think all of us um, horse people, especially who tend to have more rural lifestyles um are probably better off in the world right now because you know we don't mind being away from craziness and um you know not socializing and all that anyway i hope you're all well <clears throat> um angela says why does maggie headbutt us again that's a bit too general of a question for tonight angela Hi to Helen Gilbert and Kerry Jensen says thank you. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, well, it's been about an hour, uh, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. But thanks for joining me. I enjoyed that and um, hope you found it useful either for your individual questions and the more general stuff as well. Um, if you are either watching this live or watching the replay and it has given you more questions about how things work by all means leave a comment you could do a hashtag replay so that i know you're watching the replay with your um your general questions about animal communication and then i can do another one of these lives sometime soon to answer more questions um, the yes no questions I'm only doing if you're here live so you've got to be in it to win it um, but your general questions by all means put them in the comments and I'll save them up for another Facebook live <coughs> um, let me just check Benita says thanks for the info Mandy says I really enjoyed this thanks Trish um thank you so much your gift is neat and appreciated excellent good thank you all for joining me and um uh, i'm glad you all did find me because facebook wasn't very helpful at the start and i had to um had to do things differently anyway we got there and uh that was cool so i'll see you all next time and keep connecting with your animals in the meantime <laughs>